pro day last week. What went into the off kit and, and that opportunity? Be that was nothing more than we had uh, only a handful of guys running routes, and uh, we didn't want them to be gassed. But again, I think it means something uh, when we ask you to represent Ohio State, and I think G and K did a good job at pro day. Where's your voice, man? Uh, somewhere on the practice field. I don't know, brother. Dude, you had a security blanket and yeah, I think everyone needs to step up. G and Pat and Will and everyone. I mean, I don't know if you're just going to replace a guy like Cade. And uh, what, what, what Cade did was special. That, that was just one player. But I think about the unit, right? The unit's got to be the best unit, tight end unit in the conference, best in the country. That's Ohio State. That's why you came here to be the best. Um, so I don't know if just one person is going gonna, is gonna to step in and beat Kate Stover. I'm not asking him to do that. I'm asking the whole unit to be the toughest unit on the team, hardest working unit on the team, and I think we'll like our results. We saw the promise of Jelani last year. Kind of where is he yeah, Just like the rest of the unit. I'm, my, my challenge for Jelani, let's, let's be the toughest dude on the field, hardest working guy, and I think Jelani's going to love the results if he does that. What, yeah, what, what kind of roadblock he ran into last year is he lost his black stripe really early. Yeah, I don't know if there's any roadblock. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you know, I mean, just from a progress standpoint, uh, what what do you see in him now? No, I think he's working really hard. And uh, again, the first thing is to know what to do, and then you got to know how to do it. And then the third part is why to do it. And I think right now, Jelani's been the, the uh, best buck guy he's been. Right, he's, he's making plays. And um, again, Tim, I'm going to go back to it. the entire unit's got to be the toughest unit on the team, and, and you know, hardest working, whether it be Jelani or anybody else in the unit. Keen, how long did it take for Will to transition here and? and how is his practice getting so far? Yeah, he still he still is transitioning, and uh, I think it's a credit to to the guys that he had down in Athens, right? This transfer portal is is, is strange because there's so many unknowns, and you go in there and you don't. We're in the bull prep. I don't have any time to get to know Will really, so you're going off of what you see on film, and you got to trust that. And he showed toughness. And then uh, the next conversation, I Sam Wiggs calling me and saying, "Key, you love him, right? He, he's tough, and you could coach him hard." And then. The last part is he was coached by one of the best tight end coaches in the country, Brian Metz. Uh, so we kind of thought going in he would transition like he has, and um, he's just putting down his head and working. I'm really pleased. What's the next step for him in the offense? Again, I think right now he's thinking about, okay, what do I have? I see the signal, okay, what do I have again? Right, because it's new terminology, new signals, and then the next step's going to be, okay, how do I get that job done? And then, then the, that last piece, hopefully we can get there, is, okay, why am I doing this? How do I fit into the concept? No, I'm, I'm really proud of how Bennett, you know, reacted. He couldn't play on Saturdays, but every day he went to work and going up against Jack and JT and the boys down at, you know, the scout team. I think a lot of people would have tucked their tails and ran. And, again, it's a credit to how he was raised with Bill and Sandy and the coaches he's been around. I think I think Bennett handled it well and developed. Is he a guy that you think can help you this year? Yeah, I hope. I hope. That's why he's here. He's here to be the best tight end in the country, period. That's why he come to Ohio State. I don't care if it's... Bennett or Jace or Will or G, whoever it is, the guys I recruit, you come here to be the best tight end in the country. That's my expectation for him and everyone else in the room. You know, what's it been like uh, working with Chip? What, what kind of, you've been with him long enough to get a sense of uh, what makes him quick or what makes him different? Sure, sure, yeah, it's been awesome to answer your question. Um, he's been uh, really, really neat because the offense hasn't changed, right? This, is, this has been Coach Day's offense and Chip Kelly's offense is the same offense. It's, it's kind of neat going back to the roots and the origin, maybe understanding a new twist or why he called it how he did. Um, and it's been great for the tight ends. I'll leave it at that, not to get too much in the scheme, but we've definitely benefited. And me personally, learning every day. You know, when you look at the, I guess, relative inexperience for your group, does that change the way you coach compared to other years, the, the urgency, intensity, the toughness you're talking about? Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, Austin, that's a great question. I hope not, right? I think I think the energy was still there with a guy like Cade. Now, again, it might have been, like I said earlier, Austin, it might have been, you know, the 3,000-level the course with, with Cade because he's ran that play for four years before I got him. Um, right now, it, it, it still might be the what do I got to do. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I hope the guys feel that the energy's picked up because the urgency has. I mean, eight, number eight's not in the room anymore. Great. We're, we're going to play somebody in a couple months. Right, and there's got to be a tight end out there. Hopefully, it's two. Hopefully, it's three tight ends out there. So, hopefully, they feel the urgency is picked up. The way the room is structured now, I mean, G's been in this program for a long time, but it felt like year after year there was a veteran guy in the next wave, veteran guy in the next wave. Man, that's like dynamic in the room right now. Does that mean 
you have to provide more leadership for the guys? You know what I mean? Like, does that have to come more from you to set the tone, or is that just G's job, even if he's not going to win? Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to put it all on G, right? But again, the leaders drive the culture. Now, whether it be G or whether it be Pat, who's been here for a long time and played a lot of football, or whether it be Will came in and say, no, this is what it should look like. I mean, I want those guys to take it and run with it. You know, on Saturdays, I'm in the box. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cutting off the C gap. It's got to come from them. Now, again, my job as a coach is to make them hear things they don't want to hear, you know, push them to do things they don't want to do. So I'm certainly going to do that at times. And, um, I'll keep doing it, um, but they've done a great job of driving the culture. Keenan, you were in the room when Kevin was in the offensive meeting room for so many years. Uh, does, does having Chip kind of get you guys back to where you guys were with Kevin? I know that the room, as an offensive staff, you guys were kind of young last year. And now to have Chip with that experience, is that kind of like what you guys have with Kevin? You know, some similarities. And I think uh, the comparison is that the, we're talking about Kevin Wilson and Chip Kelly are two of the brightest you know, minds in offensive football. Um, in the last several decades. So I think there's some similarities there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's allowing Coach Day maybe to delegate, you know, to Coach Kelly and uh, let him be the best version of himself. And Coach Kelly's been an, uh, an awesome leader, right, of driving us and listening and, um, and providing input. So it's been great. I don't know if it's exactly like it was with Coach Wilson, but it feels great however it is right now. What would be initially a bigger role expected for Jelani in the Cotton Bowl and did that not get to come to fruition as much as the way that game played out. You know, I don't, I don't remember exactly what you know. The expectation was he was going to help contribute, um, and certainly we wanted him to contribute from the jump and keep him in there contributing. The game kind of uh, started off, uh, uh, you know, not ideal, and we had Kate in there, and uh, uh, you know that was his last game as a Buckeye. So we felt comfortable riding out with him. But I think Jelani and everyone else is kind of focused going forward. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, he definitely takes that forward for sure. If you are painting an ideal situation for the fall, what does the depth look like in terms of how many guys you trust? To be I think I got six seats in there, so six of the toughest dudes on the team. I'm not trying to just give you the coach speak, but. I mean, however it shakes out, hopefully we could play 13 personnel, 14 personnel, and I got guys out there that are going to go uh, uh, wreak some havoc. But I don't know. They're, they're going to make that sorted out. Right now I'm worried about whatever Thursday's practice being the toughest dudes on the field. Are you seeing enough of that to, to feel comfortable saying that that can happen by fall? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're taking strides. We'll see by the end of spring and then hopefully fall camp. It's a, it's a long ways away from whoever we play week one. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Uh, punt return and kick return and uh, getting to coach other positions too, right? I mean, it, it, I mean, special teams comes down to technique and effort, right? And that's the ultimate test of the brotherhood. And no one, no one signed up to be a Buckeye to be on punt return. They want to be first round this, first round that. So it's been awesome getting involved in that. What is that? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we're working quite a few guys back there. We, we, we got some options, so yeah, it'll be fun. What have you guys been thinking about putting Jelani in there, maybe having a bigger role? I mean, he had more time, right? Just because we have that whole month of kind of December for development. And, uh, you know, the bull prep's a lot like spring ball in that he has those three or four weeks, you know, uh, uh, to get the reps he wasn't getting during the year because Cade was taking them, right? Someone like G, how important was that for you to have start with all the snaps to be that receiving threat and the development Yeah, I think good. I think it just shows that, you know, next man in, we trust you fully, Cade couldn't go no one batted an eye it was g then it was pat period we called their offense there's no modified offense or anything like that so to put our trust in him and he went out and made a lot of plays and both those kids played really well i think that helps with the, the confidence for him and us and uh, really good yeah, uh, did, when you look at when you look at g now do you and this would be a facetious question maybe but do you see a tight end now you understand what i'm saying from a couple yeah, years I see ago tight end. A couple years ago, he was a you know he moved over from wide receiver and all this kind of stuff. What just jumped out at you about what he brings to the tight end spot? I guess. Yeah, I know what you're asking, Tim. I yeah. I, I promise you, I never like he's in the tight end room. I didn't say, oh, but he's a receiver playing tight end. He's a tight end. Yeah. He's a tight end, so he's going to be I mean, graded like a tight end, treated like it. So I never really. But like Kevin talked about when he you know first made the move, you want to you want to get this guy some confidence playing tight end. Uh, meaning, I'm not going to say against lesser opponents, but having some success out there, you know, like in the run game, uh, the blocking aspect of things and stuff. And he seems to have progressed big time from that. I mean, do you feel that way too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's gotten way better. And, again, 
at practice, he's, um, if he's on the left side, he's against JT. If he's on the right side, he's against Jack. So, I mean, there's no, this is Ohio State. You're, you're playing against the best every day. So, yeah, he's definitely progressed. Do you think that collaborative effort you guys are having on special teams, do you think that's benefiting you guys in terms of just you know, how you're coaching that phase of the game? Yeah, I think so. Dan, has, you know, as far as ownership goes, right? Like, I mean, I'm not saying I wasn't invested last year, but shoot, I'm punt return and kick return. I, I mean, that's that's Coach Hartline and I's product out there. And if there's not tight ends all over those units, and they're not going to play tight end at Ohio State. And I bet you Hartline feels the same way about the receivers. So as far as the buy-in from the staff, heck yeah. Heck yeah, for me at least speaking, for myself. When, when, when Coach Day brought that up, what, what did you think about that change? And number two, what has he told you he wants that he wasn't getting from special teams a year ago? No, he never, he never told me anything about last year. It was all about, okay, how can we be – this is, again, Ohio State. Yeah. Like, Whatever, the janitorial staff is supposed to be the best in the country. The tight end coach better be the best tight end in the country. Same thing with quarterback, same thing with punt return coach. I'm the punt return coach. I should be the best one in the country. So I got to work with Coach Hartline and Coach Keys and everyone else, learning the scheme and techniques, and now we got to put on the field. But do you, do you find yourself studying punt return oh, yeah. like NFL teams and things like that? I mean, how are, oh, yeah. you, how are you doing your prep work, I guess? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coach Hart, Coach Keys, Binks, Gunner, and I, I mean, we locked ourselves in a room for a week there, and I don't think I did any offense, so. Oh, yeah. Do you already have pretty good knowledge of the return game, or did, what, did you have to like start from scratch? No, yeah, there's no starting from scratch, Dan. I mean, it's it's all ball, and that's the that's the coolest thing about special teams is if you're on special teams, it's going to make you better tight end, it's going to make you a better DB or running back, and it's like the technique and everything like that. I think I had a pretty pretty fair foundation, and then maybe some tweaks, and you know, kind of we have to decide what our identity is going this season. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think he proved it on special teams because he played on special teams before he played offense, um, and then just just reps at practice again against you're blocking the best linebackers in the country. It, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a five star or if you're a walk on. Uh, but to that point, I think sometimes there's a mentality of, oh, but he's just a walk on. That does not exist with Pat. It went out the window. They started he's, once he started playing. Is that how you coach in your room? Oh yeah. Does that help you? Oh yeah, they know. I think everyone in my room knows and you know, guys I talked to on the recruiting trail. Cade went down and it was G and then Pat was right in. I didn't bat an eye. I'm gonna put the toughest dude out there who goes the hardest. Right? I don't I don't care if you're from Ohio, your dad's a buckeye, if you're a walk on or a five star, whatever's gonna help us win, you know? Yeah. With the Marion Max not here yet, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I mean, with uh, Max and Toe, it's FaceTimes, and it's encouraging them to get here and watch practice so that when they get here right after graduation, um, we can hit the ground running. But, yeah, as much prep work as we could do on the front end with, you know, sending them tip sheets and, and that sort of thing. With technology nowadays, like, I mean, COVID, we had to do it. So, yeah, we could get to work right now. Two more questions, folks, the, with the special teams question. The collaboration that you guys have, it's three people in one room. How, like, how does that work semantically where you guys are all putting your head sure. together to get one idea? Just how, how does that play out in the room together? Yeah, I mean, luckily, I mean, it's Coach Hart and I, and I mean, that guy, he's, we worked every, we see each other every day for the last eight years, and luckily I worked four years with him, so that's so organic. Hart and I just kind of bounce each other, uh, thoughts off each other. We could read each other's minds by now, I think. That's how close we are. So um, it's really organic in there, and then Coach Keys does a great job of kind of setting the direction, uh, giving us some uh, <laughs> expertise, and we just kind of have a flow off each other. Have you seen the guys react to that, that you're coaching yeah, I think I, I think they like it because like the accountability. Again, if if my tight ends aren't on punt return or kick return, they're not playing tight end, and they know that. So I think across the board, it, it gives us a platform to coach other positions. In, in a time when Penn transport is so big, and a guy like G probably could have left multiple times if he wanted to, what does that do for the room to have a guy who's a leader? have just so steadfast and like I want to stay here I want to stay here and make an impact yeah I think it speaks volumes you hit the nail on the head not just for G but for the brotherhood and I know it sounds cliche and people read it on Twitter and kind of roll their eyes the brotherhood is why well, do you think the entire defense came back for the brotherhood we got two goals here we haven't done them since G's been here he hasn't hit his two goals so he stayed for the brotherhood so I think it speaks volumes for G as a leader in the room um, but also, I mean, you look around our roster, how many guys could have either left for other opportunities in the portal or in the NFL. So I think it, I mean, it speaks volumes to the brotherhood. Is it, is it different at tight end with the transfer portal maybe because for 
some positions, it's such a development position, it's like where you have to develop run blocking, you have to learn the passing game. Like, is it different trying to keep kids around maybe in the portal area? It's like, yeah, maybe it is, and I haven't, I haven't really thought about that because it, it's still so new. I think you got to be so honest in recruiting, right? It, it, if you think I'm going to walk into a living room and say, come be my starting tight end, I should, you're crazy. You're crazy. Now, come prepared and get to work before you get here. And, you know, I'm going to give you the opportunity to. Again, I, to your question earlier, I don't care if he's a senior or a true freshman. If you could play, you could play, period. I can't wait. Give, give me a true freshman who could play tight end. It's Ohio State. You're going to block Jack and JT. And then you're dog tired. Next play, you're getting covered by Downs and Lathan and all those guys. Are you kidding me? What is this NFL? No, it's Ohio State, right? So yeah, I think it's a little bit uh, different, but you got to be honest on the front end. Kenan, thank you very much. Awesome, thanks, guys. Kenan.